one in three people attending primary care experience a mental health problem, but only 24% of them will receive treatment. Dr. Sheila Hardy works for the Charlie Waller Trust and hopes this film will make it easier for healthcare professionals working in primary care to recognise when a patient in their care has a common mental problem and to know what to do next. We have made this video in partnership with NHS England South East. Content has been adapted from training that is endorsed by the Royal College of Nursing. You can download the accompanying handout which has some reflective questions useful for revalidation. So when you first attended primary care, were, were you upfront about how you were feeling? To be honest, I was not open about how I was feeling. It was much easier and more manageable to limit the disclosures to the fact that I'd collapsed. Um, I, I didn't volunteer information about the previous few months, you know, the sleep, the unhealth the coping strategies uh, and the personal circumstances, you know, the relationship breakdown, etc. This film covers the conditions which are defined as common mental health problems, how to screen for depression and anxiety, how to use tools designed to assess the severity of depression, how to assess suicide risk, the treatments available for common mental health problems, the agencies which offer treatment for common mental health problems. Common mental health problems are described by the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence in their guidance as depression, obsessional compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. The last psychiatric survey carried out in England found that nearly half of adults thought they had experienced a diagnosable mental health condition at some point in their life. But only a fifth of men and a third of women received the diagnosis by a healthcare professional. A national survey of well-being showed that a fifth of people in the UK over the age of 16 years had symptoms of anxiety or depression, with a higher proportion among females than males. According to a systematic review, depression was the second leading cause of disability globally, with lower back pain being the first. Depression can negatively affect how a person feels, thinks and behaves. They may feel sad or experience a loss of interest in activities they once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems and reduce a person's ability to operate both at work and at home. The symptoms and experience of depression vary in every person. Outcomes are influenced by personality, resilience, family history, premorbid difficulties, for example, trauma and sexual abuse, relationships and social problems. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, or NICE, Guidelines for Depression employ the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, DSM, to define the condition. This is published by the American Psychiatric Association and offers a common language and standard criteria for the classification of mental disorders. The version described by NICE is the DSM-4, though it's since been updated to DSM-5. There are nine criteria for diagnosis. The types of depression are sub-threshold depression, where a person has fewer than five of the diagnostic criteria. Mild depression. A person has five or more of the diagnostic criteria and the symptoms result in minor functional impairment. Moderate depression. A person has five or more of the diagnostic criteria and between mild and severe functional impairment. Major depressive disorder, MDD is also referred to as severe depression, where a person experiences most of the diagnostic criteria and the symptoms markedly interfere with functioning, which can occur with or without psychotic symptoms. 
persistent depressive disorder. A person experiences low mood that has lasted for at least two years but may not have reached the intensity of major depression. Seasonal affective disorder arises when the days get shorter in the autumn and winter. There are types of depression which are exclusive to women, trans men and non-binary people. Perinatal depression includes major and minor depressive episodes that occur during pregnancy or in the first 12 months after delivery, also known as postpartum depression. Premenstrual dysphoric disorder is a severe form of premenstrual syndrome. The symptoms usually begin in the late luteal phase of the menstrual cycle, shortly after ovulation, and end once menstruation starts. Fear is the normal emotion to feel in response to a danger or threat. When a person experiences fear, they trigger their fight or flight response. The body adapts psychologically and physically enabling the person to either run away or to fight to their maximum ability. Anxiety occurs when the fight-flight response is triggered inappropriately, so a normal reaction to an abnormal stimulus. This stimulus is often the thought of a threat or something going wrong in the future, but it could be due to the circumstances they are in at the time. It can lead to avoidance of the situation that creates anxiety. The physical consequences of the fight-flight response, tachycardia, rapid breathing, muscle tension, nausea, trembling, are sometimes viewed by the person as being caused by a physical illness. Most anxiety disorders go unrecognized, and those that are diagnosed are treated in primary care. Types of anxiety include Generalized anxiety disorder, excessive worry about different events associated with heightened tension. Social anxiety disorder, persistent fear of or anxiety about one or more social situations that is out of proportion to the actual threat from them. Panic disorder, reoccurring unforeseen panic attacks followed by at least one month of persistent worrying about having another panic attack. Obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, the presence of obsessions and or compulsions. Post-traumatic stress disorder can develop after a stressful event or situation of exceptional threatening or catastrophic nature that is likely to cause pervasive distress in almost anyone. To recap, common mental health problems include depression and anxiety, which can negatively affect how a person thinks, feels and behaves.